Um, speaking of Arsenal, gents, there's they've got three big deals in, and we are going to chat about them. But this little story from Spain keeps coming up. Too many. <laughs> 100 million. Yeah, now listen, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to say this now. I'm going to say everyone's <laughs> laughing. Everyone's laughing. But you will laugh when, when in February the reports were they're going to spend 100 million pounds on Declan Rice. You and will you're going to get more hate. I, from I, that I didn't laugh. Right I didn't laugh. They're going to no, they're I'm, gonna give I'm, you more I'm, hate. Bro. I'm, I'm saying, right? Like, I am getting an echo from somebody. Uh, I don't know where that's coming from right now. But um, what do you guys make of this story? So, some are saying it's just from Spain. We should ignore it. No, it's got legs. You believe it got leg gaps? Yeah, I do. I do. Do you know what I said? Probably about six weeks before the end of the season, I said anyone that anyone that thinks Arsenal aren't going to have a good transfer window or a busy transfer window, I don't get it. Arsenal had their period when they're paying off the ground, right? And the, and they didn't buy players, but then since then, they've been spending money. Yeah, it's just the caliber of where they were, they couldn't go for big names because. They didn't have Champions League football. I said, now you have Champions League football, you will spend because your owners have paid for everything. Your infrastructure's sorted. You're ready to go again. You've been going again. So, um, and I think the Declan Rice one, it, I found it weird how some Arsenal fans instant go to on the Declan Rice thing was to go, ha ha, we beat you to him, City. I was like, it's weird that your go-to is to try and get one over us. What you should actually be doing is going, at last, our board is backing us. And celebrate that, that your board is showing intent. Forget this is pre-season. Last season's done. There's Right now, rivalry is a minimal. It's about getting your business done. And Arsenal's board is showing intent. Now, why would Arsenal, were top three biggest clubs in England, why would they not be able to pull off a signing of a player that has been a bit of a bench warmer in Real Madrid? They did it because he's at Real Madrid. Like even if you're so a bench warmer so Real Madrid, so is Ozil. It's still yeah. Real Madrid. Yeah, I get it. Both. So is Odegaard. But, but but he's at Real Madrid. Who you guys are forgetting the two players you just mentioned, though Ozil and Odegaard. Sorry to even cut in that, no, but why, let's why, we have to then take it back to context. Like both players were not favourable at the times that they left those clubs. So it's not yeah, like they signed Is, is Shermany really favourable at the moment? Is he favourable with Real Madrid? No, no, no. no. And that's where I agree. And this is where yeah. I agree with you. This yeah. is where I'm like, but when you guys used to, I'm like, I mean, when you're when Daniel's saying it's Real Madrid, I'm like, yes, yeah, Real Madrid. But if the players are not favourable, then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There so, isn't much you could... Yeah, Odegaard like, was a completely different story than Tushimeni. Like, Tushimeni's yeah, still being I hear, used. I do hear Dan, that. I do Dan, hear that. You said, Dan, you said with me on the last show, you couldn't understand why Rife would want Art. Uh, Arsenal over Man City. Obviously, you're a Spurs fan, so it's going to be different. Hang on, just let me, please let me finish. This notion we don't know what motivates people, and I think True Many probably does want to stay at Real Madrid, but we all know that Tonali didn't want to leave AC Milan, but he's currently a Newcastle player. This is business. <laughs> football yeah. players do not look at football like fans do, they just don't. They, they haven't done for 20, 30, 40 years. They don't, it's business. And Real Madrid scenario is interesting. They're going to drop a lot of money on Alfonso Davis, which pushes Camavinga back into the middle. And there's a big chance they go after Mbappe this summer. And to, I think they've got to sell someone significant to raise that money for Mbappe. That man isn't just going to cost 150 million. He's going to be on about 900 grand a week, a million pound a week in salary. They have to sell someone to help raise that money. I don't th listen. I'm not saying Arsenal will get him. But the idea that there isn't going to be a major casualty mm -hmm. from Real Madrid, I think, is, rid is a ridiculous do, train of thought. Do, do you know what's what, Terry? Spending money is addictive, right? Spending money and getting good feedback is addictive, right? If if you go and spend a lot of money on a nice outfit, go out and get compliments, yeah, it's addictive. So Arsenal's board have just got some great feedback from their fan base. They've gone and spent money... Probably even even in the stock market, they've probably seen the reaction. Yeah. So they're thinking, hold on a minute. We are a big club. Why don't we spend a bit more? Why don't we really show some intent? Because clearly the fans love it. The market loves it. We want to challenge the next season. We, we understand where we dropped short. We understand that next season we want to go further in the Champions League. Because Arsenal are not here to do what they did last time. They're in a, a, a Premier League battle. They're not here to do what they did when them and United went back and forth. Because now the levels have changed. People will be expecting Arsenal in the next couple of years to do more in Europe, 
right? So they have to build on it. And I, I, I honestly, I think one more big sign in that, Varsal, one more. Might not be him. Mm. Might be a surprise on Caicedo. They might go back in for him. Who knows? How I look at it. How I look at it. I'm just looking at it logistically. I'm looking at I'm looking at it logistically, right? And I'm looking at, at, at Arsenal's midfield, your your options, right? Partey, it looks like he's gonna leave. Um Jack is obviously on his way out already. And you've just paid what 65 million for Havertz and you're paying him over 200 k a week, right? If you bring in too many, for example, what does that mean for um what does that mean for players like Vieira? What does that mean for Smith Rowe? What does that mean for the squad? It means that's what I'm saying is they're still what, improving what saying, though. No, no, no. What, what I'm saying is I get I get that it is a squad, but what I'm saying is right now you have a lot of midfielders, bro. When I look at your midfield, okay, stacked, okay, here's the situation. First first off, do I sound like a Dalek still? No, no you're good. Fantastic. No, 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 you're good. You're good right, enough. lovely stuff. Right, Daps. Let's look at your team from last season, right? We know how good Man City are. Okay. Mm. Other than other than arguably three, maybe four players, could you guarantee a start for any of the other players? No. No, no, no you can't do that. that. Arsenal were the most predictable team in the Premier League last season. If everybody's fit, you knew exactly what the starting level was going to be. You knew exactly when the substitutions were going to be and who they were going to be for. It was so obvious. I don't understand how we got away with it for so long, in my opinion. Right. Now, this players that we're looking for at the moment, this is the thing, I said it on the terrace a couple of weeks ago, losing Xhaka and Partey, right? If that happens, I don't think that is a good thing. I think that's a bad thing because what we have done, we have got two players in who are an upgrade to those two players, but our, our squad is still the same. So if we are getting in like a, a, a two or many, if that does happen, or a Lavia, if that does happen, or a Saicedo, if that does happen. That then, for <laughs> me, drives the attitude of the likes of Emil Smith-Rowe, of um, Vieira, of Patino, who is desperate to come and play first-team top-flight football for Arsenal Football Club, as well as the players that are going to be starting anyway, the likes of Rice, Odegaard, Havertz, and, and the like. They are they're walking in thinking they're expected to be starting. That's bad. That's where you lose your mentality. And this is why Man United was so good way back in the day. This is why Arsenal was so good back in the day. Because when Arsenal won the went the season and beaten in 03 04, we all could all turn around and say what our best starting lineup was, was. But that team only started three times that season because we had a deeper squad and we had injuries. So you have to think of it like that. And when fans yeah, I, turn around and say mm. things like, Oh, well, who's this player going to start ahead of? Oh, well, you're going to get um, this player. Well, who are they going to start ahead of? I get that, but what I'm saying is Chumeni right now, he it seems like he's out of favour, he's not in that in that eleven, right? If he was to move on for Real Madrid, he's only gonna go to a club where he's gonna start week in, week out, gu- guaranteed to start pretty much. Right? Pretty tough, like, 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 like I've said, right now, if let's say you didn't bring in a Havertz right now, I'll be like, Do you know what, Chumeni, that could that could potentially happen. But how I'm looking at it right now is that you've brought in Havertz, and I honestly don't think you've brought in Havertz to be a bench warmer. You're, you're going to That's what I in... said, though, bro. That is exactly what I said. That if you've That's played, like... no, but we know Odegaard, he's a club captain. So his, mm. we're going to cement his place. Yeah. They've just paid 105 million for Declan Rice. His place is cemented. Sure, many is going to cost how much, Terry? You, you'll know better than me. Well, nigh on 100 million euros. Right, okay, cool. So then, all of a sudden, 65 million is a squad player. And and that's the thing. that I, This is what I keep saying, that this whole transfer window with the Havertz thing, wait and see, because he could be a squad player. I, I think with Arsenal, he really could be. Because yeah, I don't think there's any yeah, chance he, that he could end he... up being a leading light. Like through the middle, but not as an out and out striker. So when he was coming deep, it's a bit more versatile, which is great is, for a utility exactly. for, for, for a rotated player. Is and is we, perfect. Yeah. At the moment, we haven't got. We, we literally, I think there's only one position really and truly that hasn't got any cover, and that's Bakaya Saka's position. Unless mm. unless Pepe decides to stay, yeah. because we could play many players on the right hand side. Well, he's not. Another, yeah, but he's right footed. And the way that the way that Arteta is doing his thing is that he wants the inversions, you know. So like even when um, Trossard is coming in for cover, he's coming in behind, or he's coming in on on Martinelli's side. If you notice, Martinelli would be more likely through the middle than than anything mm. else. He would rotate the team completely in order to to compensate for that. So uh, I think personally, we should be looking at someone more of someone who can support Saka. Rather than going in for a too many, unless too many is coming in to start every game, 
But at the yeah, same but, time, um, we need we need squad players. We need to be looking. I want to be uh, as an Arsenal fan. You know, I've got tickets for the for the Forest game at the moment. If everyone's fit, I know what the starting lineup is going to be. Hmm. What? What? Why should I know that? You know, it's the six. Havertz full snow, right? Havertz full snow. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is where I want to yeah, yeah, yeah. this. Actually, <laughs> but that's not why I think this deal will happen. I just <laughs> think <laughs> sure many won't want to go. Let, let me just add something. No. I, what, well, 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 these well, rumors well. going on right now, it shows me one thing. Arteta's trying, not trying, he's kind of getting into his Man City phase. Whereas, like, if you ask Daps right now, who's your starting 11 next game, he probably wouldn't be able to name two names. Because one game, all of a sudden, Maris can start. Maybe Fordham will start. He's in that phase. Even the defense. Only because it's slumber and wish. <laughs> no, I season. just mean regularly. If, if this was like, April, then I'd know exactly who is starting. But yeah, I if it's saying. early in the season, where like all yeah. of a sudden you could yeah. be three in the back, you could be four yeah. in the back, you don't know. You have like four or five names on that team that could start in any moment, and you're not going to be like, why did we do that? That's what Arteta's trying to do. Arte- and Arteta... Look, Arteta, Arteta's been in his city head since he joined at Arsenal. It's just taken people to understand it. What the guy's doing there is he's like. Uh, he hasn't just learned off of Pep, I'll be honest with you. And by the way, I'm not here saying he's better than Pep or any of that, but I see things that he does that he's learned off of the way Manchester City moved as a club. He's learned They're about from the same things. philosophy, so I don't expect 100%. anything different. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but in and, terms of squad depth, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Because I criticized them last season for not having enough players that fill in that team. You knew Arsenal's best 11, but the mm. minute one player pulls out and another player comes in, you were worried. Saliba and, went and out, prime, and you brought in Holding, and you were worried. When this guy puts down a Kanji and Ake, he was not worried because he knows he can put in players that are not necessarily like for like, but he had he had like about 16 players that any of them could start. Now I'm starting to see that from Arsenal. Yeah. That, this is why you got Havertz, you got Trasardin. If he gets a Chouameni, this is you why can they sit got there Timber. and you have... Timber's and Timber, yeah, sorry, that, Timber as well. Yeah. They added Jorginho. You can name about 16 players now on the Arsenal team. Let's say they bring in the Chimeni, where in any moment, if one of these players start, you're going to be like, okay, I see why he did that today. Mm. I see yeah. why and we played we Havertz that's, that's, in that's the first nine or in the exactly what we need in at the moment. We haven't had yeah. that. Yeah, I, I hear that, Dan. You said you don't think he would want to join. I, w- I want you to unpack that thing. Why wouldn't Chimeni want to join Arsenal mm. if Real Madrid decide they don't want him? Well, I don't think Real Madrid would decide that they don't want him. I think they'd still want him, but as a player, as a backup. And I I personally think that for him, for any player, you'd rather be a backup at the biggest club in the world than be... Because as you were saying, you'd still be fighting for a squad. You'd be motivated to fight for a spot. I just don't see why he would want to go. You do and know they still... only got him because they couldn't seal the Mbappe deal last year. So when they didn't get Mbappe, they went ahead. That and that whole argument, that whole argument that they they need to get him to get rid of him because they want to get Mbappe. That whole argument is wrong because we. No, saw but I'm last saying year... that actually did happen. That is factual. Like, like I spoke with I spoke with Grizz about that too. And Grizz has his sources. They splashed that well, money <laughs> right. <The> Grizzio Cardo. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when I met Grizz, guys, I'll let you know something. When I met Grizz for the oh, first two hours, he was just bragging about his sources. Grizz's sources. That man texts me two months solid once a week saying, Hey, Jude, to the Liverpool. Exactly. <laughs> hold tight, Grizz. Hold tight, Grizz. But listen. <laughs> wait, wait. But one second, one second. That whole, th- that whole thing, that whole argument that Real Madrid need to get rid of him because they want to get Mbappe is wrong. Okay, we saw last year, apparently, Barcelona had to get rid of Frankie de Jong, but Frankie de Jong wanted to stay at Barcelona, and he didn't end up leaving. If if Tuchemani really wants to stay at Real Madrid, he could stay. I think it's more, it's not, they have to. How old is he? Dan, Dan, you are you are panicking, aren't you, mate? You're panicking. Yeah, that, yeah. Not, it's not even. It's not even about <laughs> no, me being a Tottenham fan. It's not even about me being a Tottenham fan. How old is how old is how old is Tuchemani? I don't know. Twenty one. Right, okay, yeah. so. And, and he's, he? been, he's been there for two years, right? 23, 23, yeah. Okay. You know, if yeah, he's he has 23. Enough, if, and, and they've just signed Jude Bellingham. If he has another season sat on that bench, yeah, all of a sudden his next wage demand is going to be nowhere near what he's expecting to be hitting at that age, right? Uh, it'll be good, by the way. I'm not knocking it, but it's not where he was hoping to be. It's not going to be there. Now, 
he comes to the Premier League and instantly it's back to where he thinks it should be. And he's back first. If they sign him, he's one of the first teams on Arsenal's team sheet. He's challenging again. So, and and then we've got the fact that next next year will be the Euros, right? I think it'll be the Euros. There's all these things that I get what you're saying, bro, but he spent two seasons not setting the world alight with Real Madrid. And right. however good yeah. that can be, when you're a certain age, it's like football's careers are very, very short, right? And at that age, you become stale at that age. That can impact. Look at Deli Ali. That can impact your whole career. Yeah. But Deli Ali was playing every game. Uh, that yeah, but but bro, two years on, what's he doing? That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about when he was that age, but Deli Ali is still relatively young, right? But look at him now because he didn't manage his career correctly. So sure, many could spend another two years, two three years at Real Madrid, biggest club in the world, being a bench yep. warmer, or mm. alternatively, he can go and set, go to Arsenal, be part of the project that is challenging on every front, and. Damn, that might hurt you, but that it is. No, nah, because I don't think he'll be a bench warmer though. The play, a player of that quality uh, is. Was he last year and the year before? He still no, played I'll, a lot. I'll, 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 I'll back Dan here in terms of we got to remember the players that are ahead of him, which is Luka Modric and Cruz. Once sure. they leave, yeah, yeah. his chances yeah. now start to they increase, and they're going to leave. Just, no, just, no, but but even still, like like he's. He's still competing with Luka Modric, Cruz, Kamavinga. Yeah, that's, when that's, they decided, no, like, they put Kamavinga in the left back last season, yeah, and he still I'm couldn't. Just, get no, him. I know, but that was more towards the back end of the season. I'm just, I'm just talking saying, about. Yeah, yeah, so. I, I'm just saying, guys. Dan, you look worried. Like I'm, I'm not worried. Shaking, it has nothing to do with Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with me being a Tottenham fan. Dan, you've got a look in your face like like Adam Grandmel Mason. That's what you look like. Do you know what I'm saying right now? That's what you look like. Your camera's shaking, Dan. You know he's mad. <laughs> Daddy, look when she went back to work. That's how you look right now, Daniel. You look worried, my brother. I'm not worried, man. I'm calm. Yeah. I'm calm. Yeah, I know he won't want to yeah. go. I'm calm. Yeah, I'm that's calm. the difference. That's the difference of me. I'm not. I'm not going that extreme, like Dan, where he's like, it's not. There's no chance. You're not going to get too many. There's always a chance. Yeah, yeah. Like, there I'm, is I'm a just, chance. I'm just. I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking. I'm just looking at it right now, and and the conversations I've had with Arsenal fans. I've sat on streams. So many Arsenal fans have told me Havertz is coming in to play that Xhaka role. That's what they've that's what they've said. I'm only going off of what they said. When I asked them before, I was like, where does he fit in? Oh yeah, he's coming in for Xhaka. He's not getting James. It's not that far, that's, that's, that's Arsenal fans, that's Arsenal fans doing what Arsenal fans do. And look, yes. my best friend's an Arsenal fan, yeah. Mm. He spent three three years slating Havertz, yeah. And he's now tweeting. I can't wait for him to cook. And I'm saying, bro, if I had time, I would go through all your tweets. He's like, listen, I've got to jump on it, yeah? Instantly, the minute they signed sure many, they'd be like, nah, Havertz is a squad player. Ha Arsenal's fans ride out for their plays, yeah? So that's what they're doing with that. It doesn't mean that they actually hope yeah, or but want Havertz to be in that it, position. It, it, yeah, it, it's, it's true. But what I'm saying is the fact that you're paying 65 M and paying the wage that you're going to pay this guy. He's not, he's not coming in. He's not coming in to be a squad player, is what I'm saying. He's not coming in to be a squad player because he was going to be a squad player at Chelsea. Obviously, he decided yeah, to move but, on. But again, he's coming in to be a star. I understand that logic, but I don't think that means they, they that won't be the reason why they wouldn't be able to go and get Chua Many because it's a yeah, big... But then what does that... When does he come in then? Because they've got right. That's, he plays and this right is what I was saying before. This is what I was saying before. Again, Let's stop going on about starting on, on. But Again, this is, people are missing this conversation about Rice. The position that Pep wanted Rice to come and play and wasn't DM. No, it wasn't. It was Gundogan's position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rice's mm -hmm. team was spoke about for three years. They don't just see him as a DM. They think he can play more advanced. So there's so many other options here. Let me go to some of these super chats. And I've